the love for the single cylinder modern classic motorcycle seems to have a never ending appeal. The premise of the modern classic is to offer retro styling but with modern underpinnings and easy rideability. And that's exactly what the Royal Enfield Hunter 350 and the TVS Ronin offer. Both bikes are targeted at a similar consumer base, so any of these could be a first motorcycle or an upgrade from a smaller commuter motorcycle. And these bikes are even targeted at women riders, a demographic which is slowly but steadily growing. The Hunter 350 has heritage from a powerhouse brand like Royal Enfield and it combines retro appeal in a compact package. The Ronin, on the other hand, sits in a unique position, combining features and technology in a package which is taking a shot at this hugely popular segment. Although the Ronin has a smaller engine, it's a full 20 kilos lighter than the Royal Enfield Hunter 350. Now, there's no classic model in TVS Motor Company's history to take inspiration from. So the Ronin is described as a modern retro. And TVS decided to introduce modern elements in a package which has that easy, relaxed and retro vibe. Up close, its 41mm upside down fox finished in gold look good and ooze premium appeal, as it has the LED headlight. The full digital instrument console looks modern and well put together and boasts of connected features. Overall, fit and finish and quality levels are pretty impressive on the Ronin. But when you look at the Ronin's style and proportions, it seems to be a mixed bag, with design inspiration taken from different genres of motorcycles all rolled into one. The Hunter 350 is easily the better looking motorcycle of the two. The silhouette is sporty, the proportions better. And if you are the kind who likes taking a second glance at your motorcycle every time you park it, it's clearly the Hunter which is more appealing. In fact, the Hunter's design and stance can be compared to another similar retro style roadster from a British brand. The TVS Ronin has a design which seems to be a mix of different styles. Uh, if you look at it, uh, chain guard looks like that of a cruiser and uh, it's got forward set foot pegs, quite comfortable, really seat height is not that much, so quite comfortable to sit on. But uh, the styling again is a mix match, is it a cruiser, is it a roadster and its scrambler influences like those block button tyres and this offset speedometer console. To me the front end looks quite nice, but it's the tail section which somewhat drops the Ronin of its aesthetic appeal. The Hunter, on the other hand, has a much tidier looking tail section. If you look at the overall silhouette, it's also a nicer looking motorcycle, well proportioned. A seat height, 790mm, quite low enough for riders of all kinds of height. When you swing a leg over it, first thing you notice is the foot pegs are slightly rear set and the Hunter's got a sporty and engaging riding position. But how do these bikes compare riding back to back in terms of performance, dynamics, ride quality? Overall, let's go find out. Both bikes will be used primarily for the daily commute. And on that count, both bikes are light, easy to maneuver and make quick work of filtering through traffic. The Hunter has a sporty riding stance its ergonomics and small 17-inch front wheel gives it the agility needed for quick urban work. The Hunter's 5-speed gearbox is precise and even though the clutch is alright, it doesn't get slip and assist which could have made daily work easier. 80-90 to 90 km per hour is the Hunter's sweet spot but it will happily cruise along at 100 km per hour all day if required on a longer outing. The Ronin has a more conventional upright riding stance with forward set foot pegs. But it's also the livelier engine which revs freer and the 4 valve unit feels more refined. The Ronin has a unique engine, something which isn't all like the Royal Enfields and it also has a marginally higher top speed. While the Hunter 
topped out at a speedo indicated top speed of 120 km per hour. The Ronin manages to nudge 123 km per hour with the same rider. Now, Royal Enfield is always known for this lazy long stroke engine with that characteristic thump. And that same J series, the new J series 350cc engine, has been employed in the new Hunter 350. Yes, that's the same engine which is used in the classic 350 as well as the Meteor 350. It's the long stroke engine, so the bore is about 75 mm and uh, the stroke is about 86 mm. So that's the long stroke character. It's got a thump that characterizes a typical Royal Enfield thump and it's strong on torque and it's a 350cc engine so it's the bigger engine of the two bikes and of course it's also the heavier bike now tvs on the other hand has taken a completely different approach to engine architecture although it is targeted primarily at royal enfield segment uh, tvs has uh, built a perfect square engine which is identical bore and stroke of 66 millimeters is of course a smaller engine 225 cc engine now the advantage of a perfect square engine is that uh, it revs freer slightly more rev happy and it's a very good balance between low end torque and top end high end performance which means it's got a broader rev range than the royal enfield 350 cc engine uh, it's also got very strong low end torque so in fifth gear the TVS will pull cleanly from as low as 35 km per hour without me knocking, but on the Royal Enfield, you'll be happier downshifting to fourth or even third. Crawling speeds at about five, seven km per hour even. On the Royal Enfield, you'll have to go down to first gear, but the TVS, no problems, will pull very nicely in second gear and even third gear if you desire so. So if you're a lazy kind of rider, don't want to change too many gears, the TVS, Ronin, stay in fifth gear, It'll do everything for you. And of course, the Ronin is also more fuel efficient than the Hunter. But engine refinement is one thing, and it finally boils down to overall dynamics and performance. And here too, the Ronin feels more eager and quicker than the Hunter. With its higher red line, it also feels more eager to get to speed compared to the Hunter. But its forward set foot pegs and upright riding position robs the Ronin somewhat of being fun and sporty. In comparison, the Hunter 350 feels more engaging and sporty. But when you hit the rough patches, the Hunter's slightly stiff ride quality begins to show up. It's not bone jarring, but the Hunter's ride quality feels stiffer than even its other 350cc siblings the Classic and the Meteor. Comparatively, the Ronin just sails over everything you throw at it and the Ronin's front end also feels more confident when taking on a corner. That's not to say the Hunter is lacking in agility, but it's the Ronin which feels more stable, more planted, partly due to the 41mm front suspension and partly due to the TVS Eurogrip Remora tyres. And in the braking department too, it's the Ronin which offers better bite than the Hunter. And when the surface becomes really bad, the Ronin's better ground clearance also comes in handy. But you have to be a little careful when taking on broken roads and big potholes. If you're looking for fuel efficiency, during our tests, the Hunter 350 returned between 33 and 34 km per litre in a mixture of riding conditions. And in the same conditions, the Ronin returned almost 40 km per litre. For someone looking for an option between the two, our advice would be to take a test ride of both back to back and only then take a decision based on personal choice. Eventually, both these bikes have very good products, each with its own strength and character. In fact, you cannot go wrong choosing one product over the other, and in many ways, you could say this comparison is a tie. Uh, in terms of performance, ride quality, dynamics, and fuel efficiency, it's the Ronin which has the upper hand. If only it had slightly more aesthetic appeal, this comparison could have very well swung in the Ronin's favour. But buying a motorcycle is an emotional, a personal choice. And in terms of aesthetic appeal, riding position, 
and endearment, it's the hunter which has stronger appeal. Eventually, it's down to the wire to make an objective choice to pick a winner between the two bikes. Both bikes are similarly priced, variant to variant, so they sit bang in the same price bracket. The Ronin offers a more refined engine, better fuel efficiency, better components and better ride quality. But if it's real old school charm in an affordable and accessible modern package one is looking for, the Hunter's new retro appeal just cannot be ignored. <laughs>